Hello and welcome to a VO's Journey podcast. My name is Anthony Pika. This show is all about helping the new and upcoming voiceover artists grow their business and sidestep all the crazy things that I seem to step on. This is episode number 213. Thank you guys so much for being patient with me. I'm sorry it's been, gosh, I think it's been a couple of weeks it's it's the the last episode was on the eighth. This is the twenty second. So yes, it's been a couple of weeks since I posted a podcast. So I'm excited to talk to you guys today about everything that's going on in a VO's journey. There's so much stuff from moving and selling the home and buying uh, a bunch of land and changing around the whole uh, booth and setup to going to the One Voice conference. Uh, the voiceover conference down in Dallas, Texas, and all that crazy stuff. And uh, I- I'm thrilled to be talking to you about all of it. And I'm nervous. So uh, let's get into it. Let's do it. This is VO's Journey. With your host, the incomparable Anthony Pika. All right. So good to be back and to be talking to you guys. Uh, It's so easy, I think, for all of us to get, you know, caught up and put our head down and and work, work, work. And, you know, um, it's it's uh, so important that we always push ourselves, at least for me. I know it's so important for me to just push ourselves to continue to reach out to the community and be a part of a community so that, you know, we don't um, <laughs> we don't become hermits any more than we already are. So I want to talk to you guys about all the cool stuff that's happening. Uh, first, I want to talk to you guys about the uh, incredible um, thing that's going on. If you if you didn't know, um, I was invited to speak at the One Voice Conference, Voiceover Conference, down in at Dallas Tech in Dallas, Texas, and um, it is on August. It's through August twenty sixth through the 29th. Um, they invited me to speak about Fiverr, and I think that's a really big deal. I'm very excited and honored to be invited. Uh, it's the first Voiceover Conference that I've ever uh, been invited to and actually gone to. Uh, you know, is I'm ashamed to say, but it's true. And uh, so I'm really thrilled. And, you know, it's interesting as I was looking at all the people that are going to be there, there's just some amazing people there that, you know, they're uh, the names themselves just, you know, make you kind of go ooh and ah, and you just want to meet them. And there's just some incredible people and, and to see myself, you know, my face, my, my, my headshot amongst everybody else's, uh, the speakers, uh, and the accomplished people in the voiceover world is just an honor. So I'm, I'm super excited. I will have to say I'm nervous, uh, you know, but I'm, I'm excited to be talking about, you know, topics that I know well, and that you and I know very well. And, you know, those are topics about running our own studio. Those are topics about Fiverr, yeah, you know, and, and how to build that business that we've all worked really hard over the last four or five years to do. So I'm, I'm really excited to go and talk to them. I'm going to uh, fly down there and then I'm going to stay at the uh, Dallas Fort Worth Hotel, I guess, uh, right there. And uh, or the 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 uh, I guess the the air I don't know the airport hotel and um, the conference is going to be there. It's a looks like a really beautiful venue and there's a dynamic uh, a bunch of stuff just a dynamic lineup. I'm really excited to uh, go myself. You know what I mean and and learn from everything. I will have a link uh, soon, probably within the next week or so to if you if you want to come and go to um I'm also planning on trying to put something together where we meet at least uh people from a VO's journey that are going we get together and we all go out to dinner or something like that I think that would be so awesome to meet everybody uh or to meet people from this journey and 
uh, in person, you know, so that I would love to, to do that. Cause you know, honestly, um, I know there's so many incredible people who listen to the content I put out and who watch the videos, but you know, besides sometimes we get to chat through texting or messaging, you know, I don't, you know, get to ever meet people or, or see you. So, uh, it would be an honor to be able to see you guys and, 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 and hang out with you for a night or two. So, uh, I'm looking forward to that and we're definitely going to, I'm definitely going to, you know, put something together when I, uh, we get closer. So that's super exciting. And, you know, I am going to be talking about Fiverr when we get there. And I think that's something that I've been trying to think about myself. You know, what, what will I say about Fiverr? Um, you know, there's so much to say, uh, and then you could, you know, say, um, like talk for days. I feel like I could talk for days on the subject and, you know, how to build your business, you know, um, on Fiverr. And I think that is something that as I dissect it more and more, uh, now, you know, uh, going back because, you know, I, I talk about Fiverr probably more than anybody I know, <laughs> you know, at least from the voiceover industry, more and more people are definitely talking about it a lot more now. Um, but, you know, I've talked about it for a while and helped a lot of people uh, on Fiverr. And I, I do believe that Fiverr has become the place now where, you know, you can go to make a great amount of money in voiceover and get really good work. You know, there are a still stigmas out there, of course. And you know what? Some of them, uh, a long time ago, they were deserved, right? Because uh, Fiverr was a place where you could only charge $5. Uh, and, you know, people's businesses uh, at the time couldn't make it, you know, couldn't charge more. It wasn't allowed. But now that's all changed, you know? Um, that That's sort of, I haven't done work for, for $5 in a long, long time. But you know what? Doing doing work for five dollars is is you know if we take in the context of time, and I always find this interesting, right? But let's say you offered five dollars for hundred words, okay? And at for a hundred words, it should take you five minutes, ten minutes max. It shouldn't take you any longer to do that, okay? Once you finish doing that, if you think about it, all right, five dollars. And if you did, you know, we'll even be, we'll say 10 minutes. So we'll do 10, we'll just do 10 minutes. It takes you 10 minutes to do hundred words. Okay. $5. So if you think about 60 minutes for an hour, right, that's six, 10 minute slots, right? And if you take $5 times those six slots, right? Because it was 10 minutes each. I mean, that's, what is that? $30. So you might be like, well, Anthony, thirty dollars—that's not a lot of money. But but let's let's take consideration. Uh, when I was working my full time job, I after what twelve, thirteen years of work and a master's degree was just getting close to making thirty dollars an hour. And you know, here you know we a lot of people are frustrated or not sure about charging five dollars for a hundred words. But we have to look past the the you know the 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 five dollar or ten dollar or just the dollar amount in general and look at the time, the input that you that you put in, right, and what you get out of it. Okay, how much effort are you putting in? What are you getting out? By putting in the little time it takes to do this work. All right. And the amount of money you get back, it's staggering. And by the way, that is just the base that doesn't include all the extras that can go along with it, which is where, you know, the the people that have been on Fiverr while know that you make your money with your extras. Right. So, you know, your five dollars could turn into fifteen dollars. And now, you know, you're making fifteen dollars, you know, times six is what, thirty, sixty, ninety dollars. I mean, so look, I, all I'm trying to say is that, you know, really think about this is actually extremely lucrative and it's a wonderful place to build your business. I'm excited to talk about that and actually help people, you know, get their set up and, and talk about the importance, right, of the presentation you put online, you know, with your thumbnails, with your pictures. Yes, your demos are so important, but 
it doesn't matter how good your demos are if no one can find you, right? Working, working online, representing yourself, right? Being more of an independent voice actor, that is, uh, you know, a whole world in itself and why I love talking about business, right? Because we've got to be found. We've got to be seen. We've got to be uh, uh, striking, you know, our pictures, our, our thumbnails have to be striking enough, have to be professional enough to make people stop dead in their tracks, right? Uh, there's an idea that being independent and, you know, being on platforms or pay to play sites or whatever means you don't have to be as professional. And I, I would argue that you have to be more professional because you have to, you have to get people to trust you without even knowing you or without even being able to talk to you. And I charge a lot of money. I mean, I charge a lot of money now for someone to work with me. Okay. So, I mean, people have to buy, buy my pictures, buy my work, buy the reviews, buy, you know, the, the body of my portfolios, like the things that I've done, people have to trust me enough that they're willing to buy from me without ever even talking to me. I find it just amazing and incredible. All right. So I am excited to, to talk to people and help people and answer questions at this conference about Fiverr and how they can grow their Fiverr business, you know, how they can get started. And that, you know, Fiverr is not a one catch all. Fiverr is just another marketing tool, right? Fiverr is like another agent that you have, right? It's an online agent. So I'm excited, really excited to dive into that. The other thing I wanted to talk to you guys in today's episode about is the big, super big news uh, that I have, and that is we uh, have bought, or we're in the process, we're almost closed on uh, 46 acres of land. We're super excited. Many of you might not know, but my family and I, we, uh, my wife, my two children, I have a daughter. Her name is Anna. She's six. And I have a son. His name, uh, his name is William. He's 13. And my wife, her name is Christy. And we have four horses too. Uh, we have a horse named Bella. We've got a horse named Frosty, a pony named Frosty, a pony named Molly. And then we have another pony named Chris. And, uh, we have these, um, these horses and we need a home for them. And we've had some really great places keeping them at a really nice, uh, at a, at a nice facility. But, you know, we, we wanted land for a long time. And now that we have these animals, you know, it makes a lot of sense instead of paying to just someone else to board them for us to have our land and to keep them there. So, you know, that's a, a really exciting thing. But with moving, right, and trying to find land, if anybody's tried to find land with for animals and things of that nature, you know, there's a lot of criteria. So and with the prices of homes and everything right now being so kind of, you know, inflated, you know, we decided to find raw land, really do some searching around, find some really good deals on building a house from scratch, see if we could get some deals. And we've really done a lot of work and found a builder and we're, we're building a home and, and getting that all taken care of. So in the next six to eight months, hopefully the home will be done. Um, we're putting up this home for sale. Many of you know that we moved here just only three years ago or so, uh, three and a half years ago, uh, you know, which I, cause I'd started my voiceover business and my previous home. And then we moved here and this is where I set up, you know, my new, my, the studio that many of you know me having now. And, uh, you know, it's, it's very exciting and it's also scary because all my whisper room, all my equipment will come down. Everything will be packed up, transported, uh, for six to eight months. We've made the decision to sell the house now, right? Because of the market. But in six to eight months, uh, for that time, while the home is being built, we have to, um, basically, you know, live somewhere in the meantime while the home is being built. And again, we're selling our home now, I think, you know, for the market purposes and trying to, you know, capitalize on that. So I'm going to be documenting all of that journey about, you know, going, you know, being remote, recording from, you know, a location that's not my home studio. Though I think there's a decent size, we have a decent size closet, the, in the apartment that we're that we're going to be in for you know six to eight months, but like my whisper room, I won't have that because that'll be packed up. Because that'd be silly to put up the whisper room and take it back down and then put it back up at the new place. But the new home we're putting up, I'm going to have a separate room. I decided not to build out a studio 
in the new house uh, because um, I'm going to, you know, I have my own room dedicated, of course, to the studio. So we're building a room for it. But but to keep it generally, because I have a whisper room. I love my whisper room. I love my setup, how it currently is. So I'm just going to transfer that. You know, I've looked at the layout and made sure that it's the way we want and everything. But I want to keep the room, you know what I mean, the same. I didn't want to build a whole nother room inside the house you know, for studio. Now, future, because I have all that land, <laughs> I could build an entire separate studio and a building that's separate from the house down the road, which I may end up doing uh, because I have the land to do it. But as of right now, I won't be doing that. I'm just going to be, you know, moving into uh, a, a room that'll be dedicated to the studio using all the equipment I have now. I really like my setup. So to me, my goal is to get there and set that back up. But the room will be different, of course, because it'll it won't be exactly like this room. Uh, but you know, I'm excited to get to that place. But before then, I've got to uh, figure out how to you know continue to record voiceovers. Uh, high quality professional voiceovers from, you know, um, my space. I might break back out the hobo fort, you know, do all kind of the stuff that I know I used to do when I first started for the first year and a half, two years of my voiceover business. And, um, and use the closet, which is wonderful acoustically. So, you know, I'm excited about that. I'm nervous because I'm also nervous about my computer because I got the iMac. And, you know, you, you know, we think about these things, right? As I'm moving, hopefully this helps you think about such things other than just necessarily moving. Maybe, maybe it is. Maybe if you're moving or doing something too, or you're traveling somewhere for a period of time, what do you use? You know, I'm big, like you guys know, I'm a big iMac user, uh, a big, big screen type of user. So I don't like to use laptops for my voiceover business. Just I don't like it. It's too small to view and stuff like that. So, you know, it's but transporting them as well. So like these, this equipment will be transported personally and that won't be going with movers or anything. So, you know, there's a lot of things. How am I, you know, do I reset that up? I think I'm going to take the ta- my table with me. So at least I have my table and chair and I'll keep that stuff. Do you know what I mean? Uh, I just won't have my booth. So that way, at least I'll have that general setup that I can remain the same but not the boot, you know what I mean? But I won't have the whisper room, which means I'll have to make sure that it's acoustically treated okay in the closet. I think it's a walk-in closet, so uh, that's exciting in the fact that I'll have a space <laughs> for it to record. And if we, the more clothes we get in there, the better sounding it will be. So anyways, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm excited about that. I'm nervous, um, and it should be about six to eight months for the move. And yeah, we're, we're going to be, uh, moving back uh, out there. And this is the first time, you know, when I moved back in, in 2017 or 2018 to here, you know, the business was just really starting. So, um, you know, but this is now our bread and butter. This is the, my wife is leaving her job to work, you know, with me and then my business and it's very exciting. So our business is going to, be the thing. Um, so we're gonna, you know, build this thing, uh, in a new location, but I'm not too stressed about that. I'm just, I'm just a little nervous about all the changes. So cool thing is you're going to get a chance to follow along, (laughs) uh, and figure that out with me. Um, now if you have any questions or comments about anything that I'm doing, or maybe you have some thoughts about a move that you did recently and how you took care of it, I'd love to hear your comments and your ideas, uh, you could post them into a VO's journey Facebook group. If you're not a part of that group, we'd love you to join. And, uh, you know, it'd just be really cool to hear your thoughts. Uh, also about one voice, like I said, I'm going to get a link within the next week or so that you can sign up through. And, uh, I'll be really excited to meet as many of VO journey, uh, VO's journey members as possible. And we can go out to dinner and hang out and it'll be a blast, uh, to meet, uh, meet a lot of you, uh, finally in person. So, Hey everybody, thank you so much for listening as always. You have a wonderful, wonderful day. And I uh, just wanted to give you an update about everything that's going on here and, uh, yeah, I'll keep you posted. All right. Peace. Peace. 